Hey everybody, Doc Robin here. Welcome to this week's energy update. I am your host at Becoming the Channel. If you are here with me live, say hi in the comments. And if you are watching or listening to the recording, either in the Facebook group or on YouTube, say hi. So I can come back in and say hi back to you as well. So a couple of announcements before we get started. I just finished teaching Akashic Records Level 1 Soul Journeys Method this weekend. It was off the charts powerful for those of you who attended. And if it's something that's been on your heart and mind to connect with me on through the Akashic Records to become certified, to access read and interpret your own Akashic records or to become a consultant for other people, uh, the first place that you start is with level one training. The next level one training is going to be in October, but for those of you who have already participated and completed level one certification in the Soul Journeys method, I'm going to be hosting level two and three later this spring. If you want to be on the early notification list about that, just uh, send me a DM and we'll get you on that early notification list. I feel like I'm still tuning into the timing of that. I feel like it's gonna be around the the summer solstice. I think that'll be a great time to do it. So stay tuned for that. But if you want to be on the early notification list, again, just DM me and my team will get you on that, that list. And one other thing, you know, I'm still, I still love doing one-on-one work and I have been, introducing people and initiating people into the Becoming the Channel private year-long coaching program for the past about eight weeks or so, actually, since the beginning of the year. I still have a couple of spots available in my private coaching calendar. These spots are are for high-level leaders who are really ready to learn to get the, the mentoring that I provide after 22 years of doing this work and getting everything sorted myself, just really learn how to become the channel for wealth consciousness and all of the other high frequencies that we know are out there and available to us in order to be able to channel financial wealth, as well as all levels of prosperity. So if that's something that you have been kind of paying attention to, thinking that you might be one of those few people who are meant to be in this this program with me, I want you to schedule a call. And the best way to do that is just go to drrobinmckay.com forward slash call and just let us know that you wanna have a chat about becoming the channel. And if I feel like you're a fit and I feel like it's in your highest and best good, we'll we'll book a call with you. We'll have a conversation and um, get you enrolled if it makes most sense, all right? So those are the two updates I have. And now let's get on with our updates. You know, I, for those of you who are new to me, I do have a PhD in psychology and I worked as a counseling psychologist for a long, long time. About 10 years ago, I made the shift into executive coaching for um, for leaders, CEOs, and spiritual entrepreneurs as well. And I just keep refining. I keep refining and dialing in what I've been doing. Um, I've been a clear intuitive channel since I was a little kid. That's not something I had to learn. That was just how I showed up in this incarnation. Maybe you can relate to that. A lot of my life I spent feeling too well adjusted for my own good, kind of complying and contorting to other people's agendas and and expectations and it's been over the course really of 20 years that i've come into my own as a an intuitive channel and now i teach other people who are aligned with that to do the same thing but on these weekly energy updates what i love to do is just tune into what are the energies or the frequencies that are available to us to harness to work with to make friends with as we go through this this week. And um, today's a full moon. It's March 7th. I don't, I don't know what the full moon is. It's not a wolf moon. Somebody can tell me what, which moon this is. But I love the full moon because it is a culmination. It's an opportunity for me anyway to just reflect over the past month what's been going on in my life, what have I accomplished, be grateful for what has come through, and always remembering that we are in constant expansion. Somebody said once, if you're not growing, you're dying. 
we are meant to expand. We are meant to level up and level up and level up and the, and the game keeps going. The life keeps going, right? It doesn't mean that you don't rest sometimes, of course. It doesn't mean that you don't chill, don't just chill out and like enjoy what you've created. But ultimately we are beings of expansion. We are creators and co-creators of this, of the future that is not here yet, but is coming our way and it's coming our way specifically because we are actively creating it. So with that in mind then, I just wanna share a couple of, I like to use Oracle cards to kind of guide the conversation. It just kind of anchors me in. I have my guides here as well, who are going to be supportive of us. The Lemurian High Council is here for sure. I love those, those beings, they are just, some of my favorite heart space beings, and I've been working with them for almost two years at this point. They came in kind of during the, during the pandemic to be supportive, and they do a lot of work with crystalline technology. One of my uh, colleagues was curious about why I work with all the, the women engineers in, um, in, comp in tech companies, and then she was like, oh, she goes, the reason that you do is that they're all Lumerian. The L Lumerians are the, the uh, beings who did so much with crystalline technology. Well, where do we find crystalline technology in our world today? Of course, it's in tech. And so, in fact, a lot of the women engineers and scientists who come into me maybe don't necessarily automatically identify with Lemurian, with the, the, the word Lemurian, until they get to know actually who they are rather than just what they're doing in the world. And um, then they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so Lemurian. So. That's just as a cool fun fact. All right, so they are here and I'm working. <sighs> you know, I have, he's right over here off screen, Cooper, my golden doodle. He's almost two, he's gonna be two this month. And um, he is a shredder. And usually we give him boxes from whatever gets delivered, Amazon boxes or whatever. And he goes over to his place on the couch like it's his job to shred these boxes. You know that whole, um, remember from like the 90s, reduce, reuse, recycle, that recycling kind of triangle that was out there? I always say that his job is to reduce, reduce the size of boxes to manageable portions so I can just throw them away or recycle them um, and they're already shredded. But anyway, the other day he was getting my attention and he, let me just show you what he did to this beautiful box of my Oracle deck. He didn't get to the cards. He just got to the box and he was intent on this man. I got it away from him once and then I lost track of him and he's got a long memory, the memory of an elephant. And he's so sweet right now, snoozing over in the corner. <laughs> Hi, Corey. Good to see you. All right. So with that, the cards are fine. I'm using the Rose Oracle deck, which is a, she, it's a newer deck by Rebecca Campbell. She's one of my favorite Oracle deck creators. Rebecca. All right. Let's see. What do we have here? Okay. So we don't need to do this one. And the way that I use these cards is I have, I'm clairsentient. So I just pay attention. My fingers kind of tell me which ones we're working on that one. And sometimes my eyes do too. And this one, which one, which one? Okay. All right. Ready? All right. The first one, oh, I love these. I'm just peeking ahead. Oh, this is so good. You just can't make this up. You really can't. It's pretty incredible. Okay. So the first one is for this week, trust, trust the seasons, trust the seasons. And it's about embracing change the cycles of life, transition, and growth. Well, in the Northern Hemisphere, we're coming upon springtime, and that is really a change of seasons. We're coming up on the spring equinox in a week or so. We've got Easter coming up as well in on the Christian calendar and the Orthodox calendar as well. So just a lot of new beginnings, new growth. And I have to tell you, this March feels to me like and August energy. I love the August energy, the Leo energy. It's that fiery, like 
powerful, potent energy where anything is possible and you can manifest really magical things. I can anyway, usually during August. March feels the same way to me. And even though here in the desert Southwest, we've had a lot of cloudy days, a lot of rainy days, I call my friends and family in the North and I tell them what the temperature is and they have no sympathy for me whatsoever, but it is actually very chilly here at this time. But really the message here today for all of us is about honoring our seasons. Now that can be literally the, the season of the, that, the, that the earth is undergoing. It can also be your own season. I know that a lot of people in my community are Gen X, so we're moving into that sort of perimenopause and menopausal area as well of our lives. And sometimes there is kind of a grief or mourning process about losing the woman. I'm, you're not actually losing the woman that you were, you're just going through a transition, a transformation, but it can feel that way, the loss of youth. And I remember seeing, it was a couple weeks ago, some schmo on one of the daytime TV shows was talking about how uh, Nikki Haley, the, the um, former UN ambassador to the US who I think she's running for president, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, he had commented that she's not in her prime and she's like 50. And I, you know, all of us <laughs> who are Gen X are like, okay, well, fuck off because you don't know and how dare you tell us who's in our prime and who, who's not. And um, really, the more that we as women who are in our prime embrace that we are in our prime, regardless of what our age or what our bodies are going through, the less the world is going to push against us. It's when we get in this tension with ourselves, this push-pull about, I wish things were different, um, this longing for the girl who I was when my tummy was flat or my, my skin was smoother or whatever it is, like all of those stories that we, we tell ourselves. And when we look to the external world to tell us how we're supposed to be, it only creates more pressure for us to change how we are. So the invitation this week is to just honor your season. Honor your season. Make peace with where you are. That does not mean give up and it does not mean settle, but just make peace for, with where you are. Because once you know where you are, once you've anchored into your coordinates of where you are, now you have a starting point for ascending to whatever is next for you, for creating whatever is next for you. But as long as you're in the push-pull with how the world wants you to be or how the world tells you you're supposed to show up or how you're supposed to look if you're 50 or 55 or 45 or 40 or whatever it is, um, you're going to have some, some interference with the fullest expression of who you are, with what you are channeling into this world. And because the invitation in this community is to become the channel, we want you to be the clearest vessel for the information and the frequencies to come through. The best way to do that, first and foremost, is to make peace with the season that you're in. All right, so that's, that's the first card. The second one is, this is the thorn. And this is about boundaries, protection, and clear communication. This is so perfect, right? In channeling, you don't have to channel beings that are non-physical from other dimensions like I do. You can channel frequencies. In fact, we all channel something. Um, in order to create that clear vessel, you've got to have boundaries. You've got to create a, uh, a fortification around you through which the frequency can flow. If your boundaries are diffuse, if you're too well adjusted for your own good and you're, you're complying and contorting and chameleonizing yourself into how other people want you to be or their other people's expectations or their agendas, that again is going to create some disruption and distortion to what you are channeling. So the more clear you can become by fortifying your field with proper boundaries, with thorns, not to close off your heart, not to close off your heart, but instead to create a space for the heart to expand and to be safe to expand. To have, think of it as an elite guard around you at all times so that you are safe to communicate, that you are safe to expand, you are safe to create, you are safe to fully express yourself, even if other people don't like you. 
and even if other people think you shouldn't be, or even if other people are judging you, you will reach a point when you have created a fortification around you that it doesn't matter. You're just you. And you will sit in the frequency of you and transmit that frequency across the earth. And that's where you will have the greatest impact as a thought leader or as a messenger or as a way shower, however you sh you're showing up in the world. But as long as your, your boundaries are diffuse or squishy or there's any kind of um, interference with your boundaries, the people pleasing, that kind of thing, the codependence, that's where the, the information is going to get scrambled a little bit. So this is all in the service of just getting you really great clarity around your messaging, around what you're meant to be speaking into the world, how you're meant to be contributing in the world. The third one is this, Sophia. Sophia is, remember, the Greek goddess of wisdom. And this is about divine plan, of course, wisdom, the intelligence within and your destiny. And your destiny. Understanding that you actually do have a destiny is an important aspect of being on the ascension journey. If you think that your, your life has no purpose, you have been hoodwinked. You have been hypnotized. And you have been convinced by people who also probably have a malevolent agenda about why they would want you to not think that you have a destiny or a purpose or a mission. If you're here in my space with me, rest assured you do. Rest assured you do. And it is tapping into your in, innate wisdom, your innate intelligence, not the intelligence of, of the head where you memorized facts, where you memorized stories, where you memorized the way of the world in order to get good grades, in order to be on the dean's list, in order to get a good job. Not that kind of intelligence but the innate intelligence, that inner knowing, the truth of who you are, the truth of what you're meant to be doing in this lifetime and expanding that outwardly, that is your wisdom. And when we look at making peace with where you are in the season of your life, we are all headed toward being wisdom keepers. You already are a wisdom keeper. And there's some, there's a, there's often a gap between the acknowledgement and embodiment of yourself as a wisdom keeper, right? And the expression, the full expression of that. And that's the, that's the work is to close the gap and step fully embodied into your identity, your understanding of yourself as a wisdom keeper. And you can do that with the help of this, the frequency, the energetics of Sophia, the goddess of wisdom the goddess of innate intelligence, the spiritual intelligence. And that spiritual intelligence anchors you into your destiny. And think of your destiny as just a set of coordinates where you are headed, your highest and truest path. That's your destiny. Last one. is the crowning. This is another frequency that you can access this week and use for your highest and best good. The crowning is about initiation, thresholds, and by the way, it's a full moon tonight. What a beautiful portal to step through and into what's next for you. Birth and rebooth, re, birth and rebirth. And finally, my favorite, which is a seat at the table. This is about leadership. It's about spiritual leadership. It's about leading yourself, being born into the truth of who you are and standing in the, the power of who you are as a spiritual leader, as a spiritually intelligent leader. And when you know that you know that you know that, no one, listen, no one's going to give you the, the gold star and say you're a spiritual, you're a spiritually intelligent leader. I mean, I will because I, I'll read your Neo, your personality profile, and I'll be able to see that. But I'll just, all I'll do is, tell, is affirm that, in fact, you already know this, and here's the, the data that supports you in understanding that and in anchoring to that. 
that in a room of 100 people or 1,000 people or 10,000 people, you have a very unique personality that is set apart, that is different from most people's perspectives, that is at its core the, the profile of a spiritually intelligent leader. And so as you're born into that awareness and anchor into that, that's where you can really develop momentum around expressing your gifts around channeling wealth consciousness. Let's see if they have anything else. Nope, we're good. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna close for today. It's been a joy to be here with you. Heads up, the first episode of Becoming the Channel is coming soon. We're gonna have the links already for you to be able to follow us, to be able to leave your five-star reviews, to be able to share it with your communities as well because this is a small but mighty community of way showers, messengers, and thought leaders who know that we're spiritually intelligent. It's our job to rock boats. It's our job to, to shine light and to become the best version of ourselves in order to give other people permission to do the same thing. So stay tuned for that. And I will see you in another week with another energy update. Ciao, ciao.